Hi YouTube, this is a sculpt that I've wanted to do for such a long time. It's the face hugger from Alien. I'm going to show you the whole process step by step. So this is stage one, just to get the overall rough shape just by using wire that's been kind of twisted around itself. So this is probably the cheapest way of sculpting imaginable because I just take a whole load of carrier bags like this and I kind of put them inside each other just to form rough kind of shapes, squash it all together and then this is going to be for one of these kind of um, back sections here. I'm going to squash it to roughly the right shape and then I'm just going to tape around with sellotape um, round and round. You'll see this as I go on. Here you can see I've done the two back sections and the tail and they're really like quite firm pads at this stage and then we're going to paper mache over the top of this later. You can see I've just wrapped the sellotape all the way around the tail just gives me the rough shape and again really really cheap because it's just carrier bags and sellotape. I bulk buy all my sellotape so I think I spent about 40 quid years ago and I got like uh, several hundred rolls of sellotape. Just got to be careful of these spiky ends of the legs while you're doing this because the wire can be quite sharp. Next I built up this middle section to go along the back. Exactly the same again just carrier bags, sellotape wrapped around it and you can see that just gives me that nice kind of curved surface at the back there. Then I made this pad for the belly section. You can see here again it only needs to be a very rough shape. It doesn't need to fit in perfectly at all because that's going to go in there like that and then the rest I can fix on with sellotape. Um, you can see I've just made like that sort of gap bit at the top. That's important but everything else, look, look at how big the gaps are at the sides there. doesn't matter because the tape will fill all of that later. This is with the sellotape added and you can see here, look, it fills the gaps. Um, we're going to be paper macheing over the top of all of this anyway, but that's nice and firmly in place now. Next I added substantially more wire to the tail. So I added three lengths first and then I've twisted the wire all the way around it lots of times um, and I've put quite a lot more sellotape around it as well. This really strengthens the tail and it means that um, it's not going to go anywhere later on, it's going to be nice and strong and it's also meant I can twist the tail around and form it into some kind of shape. Next I twisted some wire around itself just to form these eight little rods. These are going to lead up to where the legs are and you can see they position all the way around the body like this. Then I also made these sort of eight little padded section. Again these are just sort of carrier bags with sellotape wrapped around and the rods are going to go on top of these and then they'll go on the body like I showed you a minute ago. Um, so you can see this will form quite a nice little shape once it's got paper mache over the top of it. This is how it ended up looking once all of the sections have been added and taped on. Um, it's looking quite good now, it's really starting to take shape. Uh, you can imagine these little rod bits like really going to end up looking like tendons in the end. Then I just drew a circle on this plywood offcut and I'm going to cut this out and form the base. So I drilled a hole in the base here and you can see I've put my threaded rod through here and I'm just going to glue this on here now as well. So I've got a big washer, um, I've got a couple of big nuts here that are going to attach it on. So just a bit of the super PVA glue all the way around and then I'll squeeze that on and then um, tighten up the nut here at the top. Then I'll wipe the glue away and then turn it over and do exactly the same at the bottom. Next you can see I cut this ring to add to the bottom um, and I do it in two sections and then um, stuck them on with glue and then I've just screwed that on. And that's because that nut at the bottom was obviously you know, sticking out. Um, this just means that it's got a nice kind of level base now. You can see the rod here and this is all ready for the um, thing to be mounted on it. So the tail is going to go on like this and then I'll just tape it around lots of times uh, to attach it on and then it'll be ready for kind of paper macheing. So when I do my paper macheing, I just use kitchen paper and I tear off all of the straight edges and I just make lots of kind of random shapes like these ones you can see here. Then this is super PVA glue. Um, it's the kind of glue you use for um, doing wood flooring. It's really good stuff, it dries really strong. Um, so don't use normal PVA glue because it won't be strong enough, but super PVA or wood flooring glue is brilliant. And you can see here, um, I just put it on really loosely with my finger like this, um, just to get a, a nice big area. And then I get my bit of kitchen paper, stick it on, um, and then I will add glue over the top of that each time. 
So you can see I tore myself a whole load of extra kitchen paper there to do the next stage, but this is how far I'm at at this point. You can see I've wrapped up most of the creature with the um, paper mache. This dries so strong. And then I've just done a couple of bumps for each um, finger, and then I'll wrap more of the um, kitchen paper around this, and this should form really nice kind of finger shapes with a sort of a bump at each side of the um, joint. So this is with those particular finger sections done. And what's really nice about this is as the paper mache dries, when it's completely dried on the top, what you can do is like squeeze along the um, back edge, if you like, and that gives you another effect of like a tendon. Um, you can see here I've added bumps in exactly the same way to do the next finger sections. And this is with those sections added. Um, it doesn't matter if you end up making them a bit thin at this point because you can always like, add more kitchen paper and make it a bit thicker later on. It's really nice. Like, at this stage, I was really kind of pleased with how it was starting to look. It started to look really kind of creepy. And you can see those sort of tendons like for each of the finger sections. That makes quite a difference to the kind of realism of it. So for the tail, to start with, I just went around the whole thing with a layer of paper mache. And once that had dried, I'm now going in and I'm just adding these kind of sections on. So you can see I'm only doing it to half of the tail, just this side. And then what I do is I'll go around and do the other side afterwards. So it's just literally just folding the paper kind of over itself and then laying one bit on and then adding the next one and the next one. So you start actually with the smallest um, sections at the base of the tail and you work upwards. So they're laying flat over the top of themselves. Next I realised that I wanted to have a tongue sticking out of here. Um, I was a bit worried because I didn't really have anything to kind of attach it onto. So I had this idea where I've made this kind of cross cut and I've made a sort of a frame. This is just again with a bit of um, twisted around wire. And this is going to go slot inside there. Um, I'll put a lot of uh, paper mache around it and glue it in. And then it will be nice and solid in there. It's not going to go anywhere. This is with all the tail sections on and again as the paper mache is drying you're able to sort of squeeze it a little bit so I was able to put some of these kind of um, notch kind of marks in down here it makes it look a lot more kind of realistic. This is with that tongue section nice and firmly glued in place. You can still see the little split here and what I've done is I've just put a whole load of wet glue over the top of this and then I'll just paper mache over all of that as well so it's nice and flat. So after paper mashing around that twisted wire to form the tongue, um, you can see I've gone in here and just done the sort of folds and things for the mouth. Also like extra things like the bump on the tongue. And then all of this is just done with kind of folded paper mache, um, bits of kitchen paper. You just kind of make the rough shape, stick it on, and then paper mache over the top of it as well to kind of strengthen it all up. Any bits of waste glue and things I've just been adding to the base just to form this kind of like blobs and things. So there was a whole load of glue that had gone all the way around this bowl and was forming quite an interesting bit. So I just peeled it off, stuck it on and that gives some of these kind of weird texture shapes. This will all be brilliant later on when I come to paint it. It'll make the base look a lot more interesting. So I'll just show you how the whole thing is looking at this stage. Um, as we move up here, you can see it from this side. So you can see the mouth. I've added some little tips to the kind of fingers um, and that'll be quite nice. I'll add nails on, but probably right at the end. Uh, you can see this is the back surface and you can see like all the ridges going down into the tail. And yeah, you can see all the kind of tendons and things showing up nicely. So this is forming a really nice shape. And at this stage, I'm really pleased with it. Next, I wanted to add some detail to these kind of sack-like structures. And it hasn't escaped my notice that they look very much like the kind of back edge of a um, sheep tick. So you can see they've got this kind of um, ridges going down the middle and this sort of like extra thickness at the side. So you can see this is just very rough paper mache, all kind of squidged up. And then what you do is go over the top of that with more paper mache and that smooths it all in. So this is what it looks like with that all smoothed in. You can see it's gone really nice and kind of shiny where I've put the paper mache over the top like this, bits of kitchen paper, and then just worked it in nice and smooth. Where it meets the sort of fold of the mouth, you can take some kitchen paper while it's wet with the glue, you can kind of squash it together 
and squidge it up, bunch it up, and you get these nice kind of um, folds. This will really look like kind of folded skin texture. I'll do a bit more in here later as well, and that should really add to it. You can also add bits inside this sort of mouth area and at all the edges as well. So hopefully you can start to see there's a lot more detail being added. Um, if you look here, lots more folds inside the mouth area. Um, I've put a couple of veins on here. Um, I think that makes a bit of a difference, makes it look a bit more kind of lifelike. Here you can see I've sort of added sort of cup joints going all the way around for the fingers to kind of go into. And again, lots more kind of folds with the kitchen paper. Um, I've added more kind of structure and things inside the mouth area. And it's starting to look, yeah, a lot more detailed. I can't wait at this point to kind of paint it. Okay, I just wanted to give you this quick preview before I paint it. So you can see the whole kind of structure just done in the paper mache. I really love the paper mache way of sculpting because it's just really cheap. You know, you're just using kitchen paper, PVA glue and carrier bags mainly. And here's a little preview of the back edge of it as well. So you can see, you know, extra kind of details added to the back bit here, like the little ridges in between those kind of um, finger-like structures. And yeah, really, really pleased with the amount of detail on it. And at this point, I was really, really looking forward to getting on and painting it. So I just started off with a base coat of this creamy colour. This is just a mix of yellow ochre and white. I'm using System 3 acrylic paints for the whole of the painting stages. And um, this is just a really nice way of working to put like a sort of mid-tone colour on first. And then I can add darks into it later and I can also add lights. Quite often in the past, I've either painted my sculpts really, really black to start with and then built all the colours lighter and lighter on top. Or I start them really light and then use um, sort of wet washes to add the darks in over the top. I'm going to do a mix this time of dry brushing light onto it, but also um, adding washes of dark into it as well. This was just me adding a really dark purple colour to the base. You can see here the texture really starts to show up nicely. It was worth saving all those bits of dry glue. This is with the edge painted as well, and then I've just gone in with various um, washes of bright red and just, uh, yeah, just put this liberally over a lot of it and it goes into all of the little um, pits and things and it looks really kind of quite grisly already. I then went over all of that with some PVA glue. This is while it's still wet so you can see it's still white but as this dries it will go nice and shiny and clear and you'll see all of the um, texture of the base coming through much more clearly. So next I just added washes of a mix of colour which was yellow ochre and then I added some darker brown to it and a little bit of red so you get this sort of like chestnutty colour. If you compare the inside of the mouth which is the cream colour that I've made previously and then where I've added this darker wash and because it's a wash so it's really really watery the paint as you add it it just goes in and it goes into all of the little gaps and things and it sits in all those sort of little um, hollows where you would expect it to be darker so you start to get this really nice kind of texture really quickly this is a really fast technique and I recommend it to anybody that wants to kind of get the look of kind of shadows and texture into their work really fast next I painted this pink color on the inside of the mouth this was just a mix of the original cream color and then I just added a tiny bit of red to it and yeah it's just a flat color to start with like this so you can go into this with darker reds and um, darker purples just as washes again so that that sits into all the kind of wrinkles and folds and things. And then you can also do some dry brushing. So all of the kind of light purple um, edges and things that you can see as kind of highlights on here, these have all been added over the top. So you just take your paint, rub it on some kitchen paper and uh, until your brush is almost dry and then you just yeah, just do it on the top surfaces, just apply it quite roughly, and again, this technique's really quick, just picks out all of those little highlights over the top of everything, and starts to make it look a lot more realistic. Next, to make the tail joints stand out, I've just gone in with these kind of circles of very dark brown. So where I've put them on, obviously that really makes them kind of um, stand out from each other, but they also then need blending in. So on these ones that I've done here, you can see You've got the dark brown, then you've got more of a sort of mid-brown in the middle, put on more like a wash, and that starts to fade 
uh, one down into the other so it starts to look a bit more like a shadow and yeah I was really pleased with how this started to work um, I'm also going to be doing that uh, as you can see here look, I've done it to the finger joints and same thing like put the dark brown on and then fade it in I've just chosen to do it like in one direction so going from the body and blending outwards and I think that started to make a real difference to the look of it okay so this is after all of the painting stages have been done there's one more thing I want to do to this afterwards to make it more realistic but I'll show you that in a second you can see here I've um, dry brushed a lot more of that light color um, over a lot of the finger sections uh, and also a lot of the tail sections and it's starting to look I think a lot more realistic um, and I'm really pleased with it but I know there's one more thing I can do that's going to make it even better so I'll just show you this side first because this is the side that most people are going to view it at this is how it will be stood um, down in my studio um, because yeah I think this is the, the kind of creepiest side it's the the one that looks like it's kind of leaping at you <laughs> which is the effect that I wanted to get and my wife keeps kind of turning it around because she doesn't want to look at it so that is a good sign that means that I'm doing something right this is it viewed from the back though so you can see how those tail sections are really standing out I've also added a lot of dark bits here and there um, into the little folds between those kind of um, tendons uh, you can see on the sort of mouth parts I've added a few dark lines so they show up more also these uh, tendons along the fingers I've just added just a little dark line underneath each of those so they stand out a bit more as well originally I was going to do this life size but in the end I decided to do it between one and a half and twice life size and I think I'm really glad that I did that because it's just going to have so much more of a visual impact to anybody that goes down into my studio um, this thing stands at over a meter tall so yeah really kind of huge okay this is the extra stage I was talking about to make it look a lot more realistic so this is just a layer of PVA glue obviously this is still wet on the tail so you can see it's really white uh, it doesn't look great at this stage but as it starts to dry it goes really clear and it gives this really kind of wet glossy look to the whole thing which for a creature like this makes it like about a million times more creepy and more realistic um, but it doesn't just do that the PVA glue once it's dried it's really tough it's like a really tough layer um, it's kind of rubbery and it's really hard to tear it if you make like a sheet of it it's really hard to tear so what it's doing is it's also um, protecting your paintwork that you've done so this acrylic paint you know if you were to scrape it against an edge or something it might scrape some of the paint off um, but not with the layer of PVA glue on it it protects it and stops it from peeling off but also um, the actual glue itself because it is so strong it's actually providing extra strength to your whole model as well right the rod that goes up into the tail I wanted to disguise it uh, so it didn't look like it was supported on anything particular um, so what I've done is I've put a whole load of kitchen paper and glue and I've just formed these kind of blobs I'll add more to this later but I, this is how I start it and then I'm going to let this dry and like I say add a lot more to it and then paint it and it should look pretty gory I think and also hide that rod so this is how that ended up looking um, I actually added a lot more blobs and things onto this using a glue gun uh, and then painted it all so I painted it all orange to start with and then I've just gone in with wet washes of um, like a sort of magenta color into that as well make it look a lot more gory and then you can see I've put a layer of the PVA glue over the top as well which is still drying at this point uh, so you can see it's still white but that will look really nice and glossy once it's done and you can see it adds a whole kind of new creepy factor to the whole thing as a finishing touch I made these fingernails um, it's very tempting to add like kind of long pointy claws to a creature like this but um, HR Giga's original design made them look very kind of finger like and I think to preserve that you need to give them fingernails so I just cut these out of um, this is actually just watercolor paper which is kind of like thin card um, and then I've added those on you can see at this stage they're put on and I've painted them as well so they're just literally just glued on and painted 
uh, and then a layer of PVA glue added to the top. So this is the finished creature now. You can see it's all nice and glossy. All of the ridges and things are standing up really well. And yeah, you can see like I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's just looking really quite gory and it's going to be such a kind of amazing visual impact. You can see there's still a bit of glue that needs to dry uh, on the base especially, but you get the idea. It's going to look really, really creepy. I think the main reason for me that Alien is probably the best sci-fi movie ever made is because the creatures in it are just so believable. Like this parasitic face hugger, you could totally imagine that as a real thing. And the same with the xenomorph. Um, I will have to make the xenomorph at some point. Um, and also the chest burst. They're sort of high up on my to-do list. But I just really want to um, do the xenomorph some justice. Um, so this is all thanks to um, the artist um, H.R. Giger, Hans Rudy Giger. He is probably my, or certainly one of my favourite artists of all time. And if you haven't got any of his books, I would definitely recommend going out and getting yourself one or two of those. Um, just from a sort of creature design point of view, just incredible stuff. Lots of detail and just really imaginative. Okay, I would just like to mention that this Leon's World channel is sponsored kindly by Milliput. Um, Milliput is a two-part putty. You mix the two parts together and then it sets rock hard at room temperature in about four hours. It's a brilliant modelling material and it's what I use all the time for my smaller sculpts. So get out, get yourself a couple of packs and give it a go. Um, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope some of you will go out and make a face hugger of your own. Um, hit subscribe to see any videos I do in the future, check out my other sculpting videos and I'll catch you in the next video.